Hello, my name is Rebecca Perkins. I'm here from Boston University School of Medicine and Boston Medical Center. I'm one of the co-chairs of the National HPV Vaccination Roundtable. And I'm going to discuss today some components of a successful vaccination program for H9. The most important thing is to start with a strong recommendation. This has been called by many names. This has been called a presumptive recommendation, indicated, announcement. It all means the same thing. It basically indicates to the patient in a non-confusing way that they are due for a vaccine today. It is very simple. It says you are due for the HPV vaccine. It does not sound like if you want, you can start the HPV vaccine, which prevents cervical cancer. If vaccination is presented as an option, parents interpret that as it being unimportant. And that is not the message that you want to give. Miraculously, doing something this simple is much more effective. Strong recommendations work better and people like them because they are clear and not confusing. We audio recorded 146 interactions and analyzed the conversations. And we found that 87% of the patients received vaccination following a strong recommendation compared to only 68% when the vaccine was presented as optional. Occasionally, the provider would suggest that the patient delay vaccination. If they were 11, they would say, oh, we recommend this at 12 or something like that. And in that case, even when the parent said, indicated before the visit that they were very likely to accept vaccination, they never actually got vaccinated. So it's very, very important not to discourage vaccination or put it off because then it definitely does not happen. We also found that the um, indicated or strong recommendation was um, the most satisfactory to parents. They liked it better and more parents were dissatisfied when vaccinations were put off. We also found that starting with a strong recommendation saves time. We looked at 106 vaccine discussions across 82 clinical encounters with 43 different providers. And we found that vaccine discussions were significantly shorter when the recommendation was given in a very simple way, you are due for HPV vaccine. On average, those conversations took a total of 74 seconds compared to 140 seconds. And you can see parents still felt perfectly welcome to ask questions if they wanted to, but it just was a more clear indication of what was supposed to happen at the visit. And so it didn't generate as much confusion and the conversations were more helpful and more satisfying to patients. The odds of vaccination were also substantially higher, 9.3 times higher following a strong recommendation. And the discussion length and presentation style were again, not associated with parental satisfaction. What was also good to know is that you can teach this. It's not a natural thing to be a good vaccine recommender or to have a magical touch with parents to get them all to vaccinate. It's actually a skill that can be learned. We designed a program called Development of Systems and Education for HPV Vaccination to increase HPV vaccination rates. The core principles of the program were repeated contacts, education on the facts of HPV, as well as how to give a strong recommendation, and then quality improvement support. Providers were incentivized to participate by receiving MOC and CME credits. The key intervention components were education on a strong recommendation and initiation of the HPV vaccine series before the age of 11. So we found that um, when we audio recorded the clinical interactions before and after the, um, the intervention, the use of a strong recommendation increased from 62.5% before the intervention to almost 80% after the intervention. The providers also all agreed to start initiating the vaccine series before age 11, three practices at age nine and two practices at age 10. And while providers were originally nervous about removing HPV vaccine from the adolescent bundle, when we asked them how it had gone, they said it was easier than I thought. Their initial concerns about removing the HPV vaccine from the adolescent bundle were not confirmed. They uniformly reported high parental acceptance, reduced stigma relating to sexual activity, and found that the parents really liked the opportunity to administer fewer shots at each visit, as well as the children obviously preferred fewer shots. 
they also felt that it provided more opportunities to complete the HPV vaccine series on time. One provider says, we present it as this is a shot that we recommend and it prevents cancer and it's more effective when kids are younger. And if they get it now, they don't have to have it when they have the other two shots when they're 11. Those three things seem to convince most people that it's a good idea. We also found that the, like, the vaccine initiation was increased. The likelihood of a child getting a vaccine at a visit where they were due increased by more than 10 percentage points. And the likelihood of starting the series in the population overall increased from 75% before the intervention to 90% after the intervention. We also saw an increase in completion of the vaccine series from 60% before the intervention to 69% after the intervention. And what we were really excited to see was in one of our practices that continued to give us data for four years after the intervention was completed, we saw their vaccine series completion rates continue to rise. So this graph looks at the HEDIS measure, which is a measure of on-time completion or completion of both doses of HPV vaccine before the 13th birthday. And you can see when the um, practice started the intervention in March of 2016, they had about 62 or 64% of their kids completing the series by age 13. And by October of 2020, and remember this is despite COVID, they were up to nearly 87%. So just a steady, tremendous increase that they attributed to starting the vaccine series younger. So in summary, you can change practice culture. The key components are a strong recommendation and starting the vaccine series at nine. This can lead to sustained improvement in on-time completion for years beyond the initial intervention. We also noted that electronic medical record prompts can be helpful to sustain behavior despite provider turnover or other changes in the clinic situation. Thank you very much.